I'd like to share this with you. It's also from the candy store. It's, it's called Cynthia Make-A-Wish, a personal account. Cynthia was a gorgeous, olive-skinned, classic beauty. She was a heartthrob of every guy in the candy store. But she was strange in a simple way. And it made her untouchable. You know, someone to look at and smell as she passed by. And everyone was satisfied with that. And her strange and simple way was manifested by her making a wish on almost everything that happened. Like they dropped a devil dog. Or a passing car backfired. Or you backfired. She would make a wish on it. One day in the back of the candy store, I saw Cynthia alone in a booth, and she was talking to herself. But it was audible, as if someone was sitting with her. And see, since we were the only ones in the candy store, I could hear what she was saying. She was making a wish, but it seemed to be intermingled with a conversation she was having with herself. I know the candy store thinks I'm crazy because I constantly wish on things for people. I can't help it. They don't know the power of a heartfelt wish. My greatest wish comes when I'm free of thoughts, emotions, and feelings. And in this peaceful condition, I know, Creator, it is you granting the wish. Wow, I thought, she's talking to God. I wanted to stop listening, but I couldn't. The other time, she continued, and when I make someone happy in their happiness, their wish flows back to me and ensures my good fortune, my joy. and my happiness. I gazed at Cynthia in this moment and she was radiant. She glowed like a sunset. A comforting light surrounded her and my heart was naturally moved. Something I had never experienced. Tears welled up in my eyes just like they are now. And I slowly stole out of the candy store without disturbing Cynthia. Needless to say, <clears throat> my heart was crushed when six months later, Cynthia had died in a car crash. Yes. And I wept at a funeral and people stared at me as if I was more overwhelmed than I should be and that perhaps Cynthia was not untouchable. I ignored the thoughts. Instead, I made a wish. I knew I was throwing this last rose on an angel. And at that moment, I forever knew the power of a wish. So I weep openly at that memory. And why not? Who couldn't? You can't be a man if you can't feel like that. How could you call yourself a man if you can't cry? It's ridiculous. But that was Cynthia Make-A-Wish, a personal account from the way of the candy store. Now let me give you a little insight to the words of Goomba Guru that, that we found in the Dead Fish Scrolls. And I think this was from like, like I said, 1954, 1955. And I'll give you some insight. Like Goomba was, he was a good looking guy, you know. He had a, a soft aura that reflected in the depth his Goombarism, you know. <laughs> and whenever he held court at the schoolyard or the street corner, everyone listened. One time he said, at any moment, one of us could just drop dead. So make the best of life. And when an inspiration comes your way and sort of visits your soul, grab it. This way you avoid one of the greatest sins, the sin of omission. Your inspiration could be lost 
forever. Lost forever. Remember, for every inspiration, there's a practical realization. Thoughts become things. This is as important as the ideal itself. What is all the bullshit compared to an ounce of practice? When your body says, hey man, is this going to break my chops, cut into my naps? It's the best time to use your gift of free will and spiritual courage to take the dairy course. Your inspiration beckons for you. Get there, man. Do it. I tell you, it's probably easy to jump off the pier or ride the parachute jump in Coney Island with your eyes open. Without risk. Never hope to gain. You can never hope to gain. We can become collective goombas. And once and for all, begin to follow our dreams and not our fears. Like St. Francis said, let everything be done for love and not for fear. And the greatest gift is spiritual courage. The courage to leave the pack and draw your own map. You get it? And I got it. When Guba spoke, we got it. Yeah. And that was the way of the candy store. A little, a little insight on Goomba Guru from the Dead Fish Scrolls. Ciao. Yeah, I want to talk to you about Vinnie the Grape from the candy store. So this is for Vinnie the Grape, the wine master, although this is just uh, grape juice. <laughs> now, Vinnie the Grape was famous for his homemade wine, you know. He would crush the grapes and aged them into wine in a secret Brooklyn basement that everyone knew about, including the cops who were his best customers during the holidays. Know what I mean? The taste of wine, especially his taste of wine, was truly legendary. And as you know by now, I always got to get to the bottom line. So there I was in Vinny's basement, completely stewed, whacked out of my mind from helping the grapes scrape in the bottom of some barrels. I didn't drink that much. But the fermented fumes over several hours was enough. I was just whacked from the fumes. So between bouts of dizziness and uncontrollable laughter, <laughs> I got Vinny to open up and let me know, like, what is his relationship with the grape? Wine, Gus, is considered sacred in many religious sects. Wine is like the evolution of your inner being. It comes from the death of the grape. It's a symbol of immortality. It's like the guy... You know, Scrooge, a crass old buzzer turning into a benevolent man. He's born again, and so is the grape in the wine. It's no longer an individual grape. It's gone. And yet, it hasn't lost its life. It lives in the wine. In fact, the longer it lives, the better it gets. What the hell are you laughing about, Gus? All right, calm down now, calm down. He didn't even talk to Gus. The point is the grape would have vanished in time. That's the secret word, time. We only have a limited time as a grape. If we learn to turn into wine, we don't lose our greatness. We are exalted and even perfected. The essence of the grape into wine is the foundation of all philosophy and secret wisdom. Doesn't mean you get whacked all the time like you're going to acquire this wisdom, but there's the analogy here. You following me, Gus? Huh? Oh man, looking at you right now, Gus, I gotta say, turning you into some exalted being is a mute question. You laughing at me? Are you are you laughing at me? You think this